Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be giving you the hands-on tour of the brand new MSI GT72, which is of course the 17-inch high-end gaming model from MSI. This is a first release model and it's not a refresh of any previous release models, so even though it shares the GT name with other older releases, everything in this is all new and totally redesigned. You could call this the flagship model since it has quite a few new features on it and it's featuring some of the highest specs you can find on a laptop. We'll go ahead and get into all of the fine details as we get into the review. As for now, we'll go ahead and start with the unboxing. So as you can see, we have the standard double box shipping. The outside box is there to keep it protected during shipping and keep the inside box safe. This gives you extra crush protection and of course keeps everything else from getting scratched and it also prevents it from being such an advertisement while it's being shipped. The inner box is the MSI box itself and you can see it's the standard black and red color scheme associated with their gaming laptops. Now as we open up the laptop box itself you'll see that the laptop is right here on the side. It is covered in some cloth to keep it from getting scratched and then it has the cardboard wings on the sides. This protects it from any kind of crush or shock damage. And now there is a first look at the MSI GT72. We'll go ahead and show you what else is in the box and then we'll get more detail on the laptop. Here we have the standard product manuals, warranty, and other information. On the left hand side we have the power brick. This is responsible for charging the laptop and running off of mains power. And here's the other part of the cable for the power brick to charge it. And that's actually everything you're going to find in the box. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the laptop itself. We'll go ahead and give you a 360 degree view of the laptop so you can see what it looks like from all the different angles and get an idea of the style and form factor. You'll notice the 17 inch screen is a matte display type. It's non-glossy so you don't have to worry about interior reflections and you get this nice big cloth that you can use for keeping that screen clean. The LCD lid is made out of brushed aluminum and you'll see that it does have some shaping to it. Of course, since this is a gaming laptop, you do have the MSI gaming logo in the center there. So let's go ahead and power on the system and we're going to move into the system BIOS before we even get into the operating system so we can show you one of the really cool hardware features this laptop has. It's nothing new that gaming laptops are starting to come with multiple solid state disks and have them working together in RAID 0 to give you increased capacity and speed, but the GT72 is actually coming with four M2 solid state disks all together in RAID 0 as a stock option. So that gives us some of the fastest speeds we've ever seen, and it's advertising up to 1,600 megabytes per second of throughput. MSI has given a name to that setup, and they're calling that Super RAID 3. So that's the third iteration of their Super RAID technology. Now as we finish tapping through the rest of the BIOS, you can see some more of the hardware information the system has, such as our Core i7 4710HQ CPU and the 32 gigabytes of system RAM because we have four separate 8 gigabyte modules. And now that pretty much sums up the tour of the BIOS and let's go ahead and get into the operating system itself where we can see all the other really cool features we have. Now it's time for us to go take an in-depth look at all the interfaces the laptop has for you to connect all of your devices. On the front of the system you'll see that we just have the LED lighting and up above that you might also see that we have some lighting around the touchpad. And of course, you can see a lot of the colors coming off from underneath the multicolored keyboard. We do have independent left and right clicks on the touchpad, so we don't have to worry about a rocker switch on there. 
and the touchpad size is fairly large. So the first of our usable interfaces we'll find over on the right hand side of the laptop. As we take a spin over there you'll see that we have our Blu-ray writer in the front and it does have a dedicated eject button so you don't have to worry about software or other hotkeys to eject that. And then it's shortly followed by two USB 3.0 ports. Now as we move over to the back side of the laptop you'll see there's actually quite a bit going on here. Over on the far left hand side, kind of hiding away, is the Kinnickston lock port. And then right next to that you have one of the two cooling exhaust vents. This laptop does have dual cooling, so you have exhaust vents on both sides. Into the center of the area you have some outputs. We have two mini display ports, an HDMI output, then we have the RJ45 jack for the local networking, and of course we have the DC power plug so you can charge the laptop and run off of main power. This laptop does support having all three of the display outputs running at the same time so you can have a three monitor setup. And of course we have the second of the exhaust vents on the right hand side. Just an up close look at that brushed aluminum finish on the lid for the LCD. And now the last of our ports on the left side, you'll see that we have four USB 3.0 ports all in a row. And then we have our four 3.5 millimeter audio connectors. And we have the SD card reader. So in summary, the connections of this laptop are fairly good. You have six USB 3.0 ports, so it's very good for USB connectivity. And having all four of those audio connections makes it very easy to interface this into other audio setups. Blu-ray writer, so you can watch Blu-ray movies and of course burn onto Blu-ray discs, and three simultaneous monitor outputs. So pretty good with the connectivity. So by now with this up close and personal tour of the laptop, you probably notice it's a little bit thicker than some of the thin and light gaming laptops we've been reviewing recently. This is definitely normal for a laptop that has so much hardware power in it. This is basically a mobile workstation, so you do make small sacrifices when it comes to the weight and the size when you're carrying so much power in a small portable form factor. Now let's go take a really close look at the SteelSeries keyboard. We have the chiclet design, so it's a nice low profile key with a short throw. The multicolored LED backlighting can be controlled via the software on the laptop. And this keyboard does support hotkeys, so you can program the keys for hotkey support inside of the software as well. Over on the left hand side we have a whole series of control buttons for the laptop. We have the power button at the top and then down below that we have the graphics button. This button actually is going to be separating the integrated graphics from the discrete graphics and forcing you to switch between them at any given time. This is a very important feature for gamers because there's always been system issues with hybrid graphics systems where the integrated graphics sometimes gets used instead of your dedicated graphics when you're trying to play video games. Now by making the system at a hardware level only use one or the other, you can never have that problem again. Now the next button down is the fan button. This is going to force into the turbo fan setting and turn the fans to 100%. You have a standard media play button below that. And then at the bottom, the SteelSeries logo controls the LED lighting levels for the laptop's lighting system. Now as far as the lighting on the system, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the SteelSeries software here. This is where you can control all the different colors of the keyboard and multiple other parts of the laptop from the software itself. So if we go into the color settings area, you'll see that you have color zones for the keyboard, but you'll also see those red areas in the front of the laptop. You can control that color and also the stripe of color around the touchpad. All of that can be modified so that way you can get the look and feel that you want on the laptop and give it the visual appeal that you're looking for. Now there's only a few more features left for us to look at on the outside of the laptop. One of those is going to be the sound system. The Dynaudio sound system has pretty much been the best in the market ever since the MSI has adopted it. And the GT72 is no exception. Very nice, clear, crisp sound presented by the front speakers. And then of course you have the dedicated subwoofer underneath of the unit to give you a little bit more bass. On the top of the LCD screen, of course, you're going to have your integrated webcam and microphone. 
you can see the small holes to the left and right of the webcam. That's where the microphone gets its audio from. And that pretty much gives us full coverage of everything on the outside of the laptop that you can see or touch. So now we'll go ahead and go into the more of the detailed review specifications as far as noise, weight, heat, and gaming benchmarks. And we'll start off here with the weight. With the laptop on a scale, you can see that we get eight pounds and six ounces. This is just the laptop itself. It's not too heavy considering what it is, but of course, if you throw in your charger as well, you're gonna raise the weight up a little bit more. With everything until you're looking at 10 pounds and seven ounces. So this is a decent amount of weight if you were carrying it around all day. I would definitely recommend that you get some kind of laptop backpack so you can put the weight on your shoulders. Just the power charger by itself is one pound and 11 ounces. So just shy of two pounds. With the system weight out of the way, it's now time to take a look at the system size. We'll break out the tape measure here. We're looking at the front of the unit and now the rear. You can see this is your traditional wedge shape that it is thicker in the rear. And of course you have the standoffs keeping the laptop up off of your tabletop surface so the air can get into the cooling system from underneath of the laptop. Now moving into the device manager, we'll look at some of the hardware. We'll see our NVIDIA GTX 880 mobile at the top. Down below under your network adapters, you'll see that Killer is supplying both your wired and your wireless networking. This actually brings us to mention one of the really neat features this laptop offers that you won't find in too many other units. Because Killer supplies your hardware here, you can use their software to actually dedicate your traffic. As an example, you can have your wired and wireless connected at the exact same time and then tell your web traffic to go through your wireless and then save all of your wired connection just for your gaming. That could, depending on your connection, mean better ping and latency times and also maybe better playability. And really quick before we leave the hardware section, a quick look at the GPU-Z readings for the 880 mobile. Now it's time for us to move on into one of our other benchmarks and this is the noise levels. When it comes to high-end gaming laptops, you have a lot of hardware and a lot of heat. Therefore, the cooling system has to work very hard. Some laptops do a really good job of keeping it nice and quiet, and others are just obnoxious. Reviews don't really do a good job of showing you how loud they are through video, so that's why we have the equipment to show you exactly how much noise is coming out. So now we're going to go ahead and kick it up to the 100% fan speed with the turbo boost of the fans. And now you can see the worst case scenario. Keep in mind that our monitor is right next to the exhaust. These are the worst case scenarios, but that's what we want to show you. That way you know exactly what to expect. You can see as we pull away from the exhaust how the readings actually dramatically decrease with just a short distance. That goes to show that if you're further away from the laptop, the levels are going to be much lower. The next thing in our series of tests is going to be the temperature test. So here's our ambient readings. We can see we're at 73 right now. And we're going to be using an infrared thermometer to point at different hot spots on the laptop and see if we find anything out of the ordinary. What we're looking for here is to see that heat is coming out of the system, usually through the keyboard area, but staying away from the areas that your hands are going to be in contact with. So your touchpad and your palm rest areas need to stay relatively cool. Of course, as we get around to checking the heat from the exhaust in a moment, you want that also to be reading pretty high. The more heat that you see coming out of the exhaust, that means more heat is being pulled out of the system and the cooling system is working properly.
Now moving on to the one benchmark that's going to matter most to the gamers, and that's the gaming performance benchmark. 3D Mark 11 gave us a performance score of 8,467 with the stock hardware. So that's the NVIDIA GTX 880 Mobile and the Intel 4710HQ. Over on the thermal monitoring area, you can see that the temperatures are absolutely amazing. 72 degrees Celsius max on the GPU and only in the 60s for the CPU it makes this one of the best cooling systems we've ever seen. And now for the Super Raid 3, you can see the read and write speeds that we got by running Crystal Disk Mark. Over 1,000 megabytes per second on the write and almost 1,600 exactly as advertised for the reads. Now we're on to the bottom side of the unit and this is going to bring us to the last part of our review which is going to be the disassembly. You can see there's plenty of room for ventilation here, lots of places for air to get into the system. Also, you only have to remove seven screws to take apart the entire bottom half of the laptop to get into the system for upgrades. This is a very interesting looking bottom side of a laptop. As you can see, it does not look plain and basic. They've gone the extra mile to make it look very gaming laptop-like. So now with our seven screws removed, we can go ahead and remove the entire bottom plate of the laptop itself. Now we can get an inside look at all the robust hardware the GT72 has. We'll start by taking a look at the cooling system at the top. We have the dedicated left and right hand fans. You'll see that the heat pipes on the left fan are taking care of the GPU and just one of them going to the CPU, while the right one is entirely dedicated to the CPU. When we did our temperature testing earlier, you saw that the left and right temperatures were relatively balanced. So this shows that the heat pipe design was really good to keep the CPU and GPU heat shared between both fans. Here we have our dedicated subwoofer that goes with the Dyn Audio speaker system. So over here we find our M2 solid state discs. You'll see two of them in front of you, there's actually four there in that box. And then over to the side we have our mechanical hard drive for the mass storage needs. Even though with four solid state discs you do have a decent amount of storage, it's good to keep your files on a separate disc. Now this slot pulls out and this is where you'll find the other two M2 solid state discs hiding on the other side. So everybody, that's going to bring our GT72 review to a close. We hope we gave you all the information you were looking for on this unit. Just remember you can find more information by going to our website and then visiting the product page where you'll find the full system specifications and the current pricing and availability. If you have any other questions that we didn't answer for you, then please contact us and we'll be happy to help you out. So once again, we just want to remind you this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.